So how do we, how did Haiti get here today? And why did I as a Haitian have to move to New York? Uh, one of the things that this is particularly an example in, um, of the kind of forces that are pushing. And here we can look at the issue of uh, present day, the refugee issue, though today they call it immigration or migrants, but the, I prefer the term of refugees. Uh, forces on the ground are pushing, continue to push Haitians away from their, from their land. And at the time when I left in 1970, it was the dictatorship of Papa Doc Duvalier. And everyone, and that's Francois Duvalier was a country doctor and he was illegally put in power by the US government that imposed him onto the people of Haiti and imposed this kind of dictatorship that uh, really made Haiti, that started the decline basically of Haiti, the decline that we are seeing today. And so Duvalier was a departure from the vision of our foremothers and forefathers who believe in a land of equality and democracy. And I mentioned that because Duvalier even though he used, he quoted Dessalines a lot, he talked black power, but it was just a ruse so that he could do the bidding of US imperialism. So very similar to Mobutu Seseko in Africa, uh, taking a nationalist, saying nationalist things, but really black nationalist things, but in a sense, it was a cover so that they could work, do the bidding of US imperialism in a much better way and try and fool people both domestically and internationally. Of, of Haiti, of course, I want to pay tribute to the original Arawaks and the Tainos and the Caribs who inhabited the island. And as you know, Christopher Columbus claimed that he had discovered the island, which was a ridiculous claim. It would be as if in 1970, I would come to America and say that I discovered it. And so I want to pay tribute to the, these, um, the native the indigenous communities, the indigenous nations that were wiped out following the genocidal war of Christopher Columbus. And, um, and he started bringing, uh, kidnapping our people, not him particularly, but many of the Spanish um, uh, colonizers started bringing in, kidnapping our people from the African continent and bringing them to work in the various plantations that were being established. First to dig for gold and secondly, to work on the plantations. So I'll skip forward very quickly. I can jump to 1791, major uprising of the against the system of slavery. But who were these Africans? They were people from stable societies. It would be as if the Nazis had successfully carried out centuries of enslavement and later on tried to tell you, well, those people who were enslaved had no history. They had no beginning. They had no, no culture. And, and of course, because it only the Nazis only lasted, what, uh, maybe more, at the most 10 years, in there also everybody would say, ah, oh, this is fanciful. However, because it lasted so long in Africa uh, and they were so, so good at doing this and it lasted centuries and they were so good at putting out lies. So many people would say, well, the Africans had no culture and repeat the lies of the colonizers and the lies of the enslavers. But our people knew better because at the time of the revolution, 1791, almost two thirds of the African, of the enslaved African population had been born in Africa. They knew different. And in preparation for the uprising, they, they had a vision, which wasn't only to break their chains, but also to take over the land, to free the land, as we would say today, and, and create a new nation. And this was from the grassroots movement. And I'm saying this putting in context today's Lavalas movement. Today, the movement is called Lavalas, but it is a continuation of this historical movement of our people for liberation, for justice, for dignity, for democracy, and for sovereignty, self-determination. So in order to understand the Lavalas movement, the movement of the people today, we have to look at uh, the past. 
And very quickly, I want to let you know that um, after 13 year war of liberation, the, our African uh, foremothers and forefathers, and I want to emphasize that again, they declared themselves a free and independent nation and didn't stop there. They proclaimed Haiti to be a sanctuary nation, inviting oppressed people, Africans, enslaved Africans, indigenous people, and anyone fighting for freedom and against this odious system of colonialism and uh, slavery to come to Haiti. And Haiti would recognize them as Haitian citizens and defend their freedom. And so right after the Haitian Revolution, these Africans who had fought for their freedom and proclaimed to the world the determination to live free actually envisioned the, the struggle against colonialism and slavery. And so they went on to fight in South, in South America, in Central America with Bolivar. Bolivar came and asked, requested assistance. And the president at the time, first it was Dessalin, who was the head of state, and President Pétion later on offered him the weapons, the ships, and the ammunition. Twice he was defeated and came back and Haiti provided him with that. I will close with this, and I don't want to, um, because I could go on and on about it, but I just want to close with this. What was the response of the enslaving, of the slave empires to Haiti? Well, the response was to try to destroy it, to prevent it from uh, developing. And so one of the first things they did, and remember this is the same thing that's being applied against Cuba, it was an economic embargo. The US as a slave society, as an enslaved nation, refused to recognize Haitian independence. And so they sided with the French and the British and everyone else and demanded that Haiti pay reparations to the former plantation owners. Now, this is the beginning. Uh, connect that with the debt today. It's by no accident that you see former colonies of those uh, enslaved nations having a debt that they have to pay. For centuries, they have been colonized, their wealth stolen. And yet to this day, they are the ones who end up having to owe money to the people who stole their wealth and, um, and not the other way around. And so this is this uh, forced um, demand, this force, uh, how should I say this, this extortion of our of monies from Haiti to repay French slave owners is actually, um, this is one of the things that contributed to really the, the impoverishment of Haiti, of the people of Haiti. Haiti is by no means a poor country. Haiti is by no means the most impoverished nation. The people of Haiti are among the most robbed people in the Americas. And so I'll stop right there. Thank you.